The Life of St. Theophan the Recluse Theophan the Recluse, born 1815, passed over 1894, was born at Chernavsk near Orlov in the central Russian province of Vyadka. His given name was George Vasilyevich Govrov. His father was a parish priest and his mother was kindly and devout. After attending clerical school, he was sent to a seminary to be trained for the priesthood. He was a brilliant student, finishing at the top of his class. Even at this period of life, his teachers described him as disposed to solitude, gentle, and silent. After seminary, he studied for four years at the Theological Academy of Kiev. Here he visited the caves of the kievo perzhavsk Lavra, the cradle of Russian monasticism, and gained lasting impressions of monastic life. After graduation from the academy, Theophan took monastic vows and was ordained to the priesthood. His great academic skills caused him to advance rapidly. First, in 1841, he became headmaster of the Kiev Theological School. Later, he became a professor in the St. Petersburg Ecclesiastical Academy. Finally, he was made rector of Olenz Seminary in 1855 and of St. Petersburg Academy in 1857. In 1847, Theophan was sent to serve for seven years in Palestine, Constantinople, and the Near East as a member of the Orthodox Mission in the Holy Land. During this time, he learned Greek, and through reading the many spiritual books he found in the Near East libraries, he became better acquainted with the Fathers. The later writings of Theophan draw heavily from this patristic background. On June 1, 1859, Theophan was consecrated bishop. He served four years in the See of Tambov, and then was transferred to the Diocese of Vladimir. Two years after his own consecration, St. Tikhon of Vadonsk was canonized. From his childhood, Bishop Theophan had held a special love for St. Tikhon, and from this time on, he consciously and zealously began to imitate St. Tikhon and his example of asceticism. Although a kindly bishop, a good administrator, and a strong preacher, Bishop Theophan grew increasingly weary of public office. He longed to lead a life of prayer and seclusion. In 1866, he resigned from his active work of administration and after preaching his final message to an enormous crowd at the Cathedral of Vladimir, retired to a remote monastery hidden in the great forest at Vishen. Here he was to remain in seclusion until his death 28 years later. Theophan was appointed abbot of the monastery and for the first six years of his life there took an active part in the monastic services. Beginning in 1872, however, Theophan became a recluse. He remained strictly secluded, never going outside his cell, seeing no one but his confessor and the superior of his monastery. His was a life of complete solitude. As a recluse for the rest of his life, Theophan devoted himself to prayer and asceticism, to correspondence and to literary work. His personal discipline was astounding. His daily diet consisted of nothing more than the barest essentials, tea, a few pieces of bread, and during non-fast periods, a bit of milk and one or two eggs, just enough to keep his health. His cell had two barely furnished rooms, including a small domestic chapel with just the basic necessary liturgical items. During the later years of his life, he celebrated the divine liturgy daily in his own chapel by himself without a server. He continually prayed the Jesus prayer and constantly strove to perfect in himself the practice of 
prayer of the mind in the heart. In addition to his own ascetical labors, he spent hours every day corresponding with people from all over Russia. He received from 20 to 40 letters per day and faithfully answered them all. Though he never met face to face with the people with whom he corresponded, he gave insightful direction to his spiritual children through his letters. He also gained from them an understanding of contemporary problems otherwise denied to him by his secluded lifestyle. His insight into contemporary situations and life was prophetic in nature. Much of his correspondence has been saved and compiled and is partially published in ten volumes. The wonderful spiritual anthology, The Art of Prayer, draws heavily from this correspondence. Theophan brought with him into his seclusion a library of spiritual literature ranging from the early fathers to contemporary theology and philosophy. The thoughts and spirit of the fathers filled his counsels and writings. He spent much time translating various spiritual works into Russian to make them accessible to the Russian people. Not only a translator, he wrote many ascetical works of his own. Especially important are his teachings on the use of the Jesus prayer and prayer of the heart. He wrote theological material on a simple, basic level that would be understandable to the less educated. He also wrote commentaries on the epistles of St. Paul. For years, the faithful of Russia and others around the world, as his written works became known, have recognized in Theophan a truly spirit-filled man and guiding light in the area of personal spirituality. Just recently, however, he has been officially recognized for his sanctity of life and given a place of special honor in the church. In an official act of local council of the Russian Orthodox Church on June 6, 1988, Bishop Theophan the Recluse, along with eight other Russian Orthodox faithful, was officially canonized. May St. Theophan's life be an example to us all.